How's it going, all you lovely individuals? What's going on, guys? Jade here, and welcome to a super, hopefully quick video about Ableton, and more specifically about the Synthesizer plugin Serum. This is sort of a process of teaching myself and you guys in the process because I am super duper frustrated at the lack of sources on this specific thing in general. And what I'm talking about here is that iconic future bass pluck. And if you have heard it, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds just like that. And I'm gonna show you today how to make your own quick and dirty version of that in Serum. Now there are a lot of different things that you can do here to make it sound, you know, more open, more your style. But what I'm gonna show you here today is gonna be like what you really need to get started, to start making that future bass pluck. I'm also gonna put the preset in the description down below. So if you wanna download that and, you know, use it yourself without making it, it's perfectly fine. But this is gonna also teach you some things about Serum you might not have known. Cause think, keep in mind, I am also a beginner and I wish I knew half of this stuff whenever I started. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop in. You're gonna wanna go ahead and go to here. Just, just drag in your serum really quickly. Just drag it over here, bring it up right here and we have a fresh initialization. So now that we have this here, let's go ahead and rock and roll. So we're gonna go ahead and mess with the first oscillator here really quickly. Go ahead, click on default, go to analog and click on basic MCB, okay? Then go to here. Click on your sine wave, alrighty, there you go. And then go ahead and first thing, change the unison all the way up to eight on this one, okay? Eight is gonna be good, because it's gonna utilize everything that's in the basic MCB, alrighty? Now go ahead and change this detune down to maybe about 10. Point 10, I would say is really good, and the blend up to maybe about 86. Try and get these little peaks that you just saw pop up, try and get those as even as you possibly can, okay? Phase is good right here, random is good right here as well. Change the wavetable position down to maybe about right here, 50. It's gonna change this look, but that's what you want right now, okay? And then go ahead and change this right here. Go ahead and change your warp to bend plus, okay? And while you're at it, go ahead and turn the level down. Trust me on that one, it's gonna, it's gonna seem weird at first, but go ahead and turn it down to zero. Now we're gonna go ahead and focus on your second oscillator here really quickly, okay? Go ahead and click on default, go to analog, and go to basic shapes, okay? Now what we're gonna wanna do is change the weight table position to right here. And that's gonna look like that, but we're gonna change that, okay? You're gonna wanna go here, click on these, and change this into just your everyday saw wave, okay? Go ahead and do this, do this, do this, do this right here. Yeah, leave that like that, okay? And the reason why we're doing it in that, sp in that specific position and then also leaving all of these is because it's gonna make the unison more effective, okay? So while we're at it, go ahead and change the unison up to four. And then now we're gonna mess with these things yet again. Okay, change the detune down to about the same on the other one and the blend up a little bit higher than the other one. Well, like I said, try and make those peaks as good as you can, as even as you can right there. Weight table position, already good. And go ahead and change this to bend plus as well. So I'm gonna change the look here, but it's gonna change the sound and level down to zero as well. Now go back up here to filter. Keep it on MG low, but go ahead and click B. Turn the cutoff all the way down. Resistance up just a tiny little bit. This, the variation just a little tiny bit up, not too much. And the mix should be left all the way up. Now, we have, we have a pretty good start here, but if you click this, not gonna make any sound, okay? You know, we don't really have anything going on here just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and mess with our envelopes down here, starting with your first envelope. Drag this out just a little bit. Take the release maybe about, I don't know, a 200 something milliseconds, like down to the, out to the first line is where I really recommend people do it. Okay, and then we're going to leave the decay right here and the attack and the hold as low as we possibly can. Turn turn the attack down actually, that's what you really want. Okay, and the sock and the second envelope is gonna be what you're really gonna, gonna wanna mess with here, okay? Turn this down to zero as well. Turn the hold and then turn the decay down quite a decent bit actually, maybe about to like 175. And the sustain is gonna be all the way down as well, okay? The release you can leave, but yeah, these two envelopes are good. Now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of the LFO. I don't really know what the LFO stands for, but it's really crucial in this VST specifically, okay? So go ahead and drag this up like that. Leaving it right there should be just about perfect. And then go ahead, while we're at it, click envelope, 
and then click trip right here okay well what the envelope thing is going to do is give it that classic pluck sound you know so that way like if you click if you click this there's no sound just yet obviously but if you click this you know instead of going like wah 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 wah, wah it's going to go wah and just stop okay so it's going to give you that that classic sound you can actually alter this if you want to but you know that, that's entirely up to you this is just giving you the baseline the baseline that you need okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to start altering things specifically we're going to start dragging the lfo to multiple things up here drag it to this bin plus drag it to level right here drag it to your bin plus here drag it to your level right here and then drag it to the cutoff right here okay and now we should get some sound listen at that this is the beginning of your plug now if you if you hear it already it already has that like wow that wow you know that wow that you get in that that thing that you get right there okay so now we're gonna change this to legato okay legato isn't really doing too much for you right now but trust me Whenever I say it's going to help you out in the long run. Okay. So this is a lot of what you need. Like, this is a lot of all that you really need, if I'm keeping real with you, Chief. But next, we're going to mess with the effects to make the sound even better. And you're going to need three. And these three are super duper important. Hyperdimension is, I would say, one of the most important. And then compressor as well. And the reverb. We're actually going to turn the reverb off for right now. We're going to get to it later, okay? The first thing you want to look at is the actual, the actual hyper itself. So change the detune. Actually, no. So leave the rate right and the detune the same, change the unison up to 7, and turn the mix all the way down. Trust me on that one for right now, okay? And then what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to put the LFO onto this mix, okay? Now listen at this. That's going to give you that, like, harsh, really nice sound that you want, okay? That really, like, you know, that really, like, impacts your future bass sound, okay? Now what we're going to do is mess with the compressor to make it sound even better. Click this, turn on multiband. Doesn't really change anything too much right now, but we're gonna turn up the gain a little bit, turn the release up a whole bunch, okay? The attack all the way down. The ratio the same and the threshold the same, and now it's gonna sound like that. It's gonna, oh, it's gonna really be in your face, dude. And then now we're gonna take a look at the reverb, but this isn't super necessary, because I highly recommend you use a higher quality reverb engine in your DAW itself. But we're going to look at it anyway, we're, we're, just in case you want this feature. And maybe you'll learn something about the reverb feature in Serum as well. So go ahead, go here, go to here, go to size, turn this down maybe about like right here. Turn this decay down just a little bit. Turn the low cut up all the way, dude, like all the way to like 36%. High cut up just a tiny little bit. The spin and the spin depth should be okay. Now here's, here's why I don't like using this, because it's a little bit weirdly, like pointlessly complicated. Go down here. Get yourself a get yourself a mod, and then go ahead, or a macro. Excuse me, I guess is what they call it. Go ahead and name it Reverb Rev or something. You know, something really quick, okay? And turn it up to like right here, like right here maybe, okay? Before you actually drag this to this, okay? I'm actually gonna show you really quickly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the mod wheel, okay? We're gonna we're gonna name it Rev again, okay? Before you drag this to this, okay, make sure that your mix wheel is set to like exactly 50%, okay? And then drag this wheel here and then turn it all the way down, okay? This is not gonna let it go past 50% so that it doesn't sound super duper harsh. You'll, you'll hear what I mean. See, it still gives you that good like reverb that you want, right? But it isn't like super duper like, like, you know, it doesn't last a super insanely long time, okay? And dudes, that is a lot of all that you need. Like, that is essentially all that you need to get started on making, like, that future based pluck, you know? Like, look at them wiggle right there, dude. Look at them wiggle. Yep. So, this is going to be your really good basis of actually making the pluck yourself. There's a lot of things you can mess with here to make it sound, like, more smooth, more even, you know? Like, for instance, one thing that I really, I always usually, like, really like to do is, is mess around with these really quickly. Because then you can, you can change the way that it sounds, like, fundamentally. Like, you can make it more even like that, which I always really enjoy. Like, instead of making it, like, you know, so harsh, um, putting putting two sine waves in there is really good. It sounds really good like that, in my opinion. And even you can go and turn off, like, you know, the hyper. Makes it sound more smooth as well, but I like the hyper, so I'm going to leave that on. Yeah. And, and then, you know, maybe you're like, oh, well, that, you know, maybe you're like, that doesn't sound super duper good. Well, let's, like... Let, let's turn this on really quickly, okay? Like, 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 let's, like, actually use this in a chord so you can really hear what I mean, okay? And it sounds like a, it's, it sounds like a chord, you know? Like, 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 this is, like, 
This is like your future based sound, man. And we can we can make it lower by dragging all this down to like the end of like if I drag this down to F4. That is a future based chord. Like, you know, th those are gonna be like, like the future based chords you hear, you know? And then if we start like doing this, you know? It, it, you have this. That is the basis, the fundamentals of future bass, dude. This is it, you know? This is your start, okay? And I wish I would have had the start whenever I started learning how to how to make serum wave tables and stuff. But now you have it, okay? Go forth, make the music that you want to make, man. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you make something using my um my theory here, please let me know. Send it my way. I'd be happy to listen to it, guys. Thank you so much. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Peace out.